What's going on guys, Banglin here coming back at you with another video and today we have another NFL draft do-over for you guys. If you missed the last couple where I kind of explained the rules more so, be sure to check those out. Those are on my channel or you can just search what year you want and then NFL draft do-over, NFL redraft, something like that. We did one for 2017, 2016, 2015, 20, actually not 2017, but 2016, 2015, 2014 and now 2013. This is a 2013 NFL Draft, and one of the worst draft classes in recent memory. That being said, hope you're excited as I am. Um, mainly what you need to think about this, it is an alternate timeline where you are aware of how good the players are going to become, yet you don't have any of the players drafted afterwards, obviously, even in the same draft in the second round. So it's a complete draft do-over. Everyone who is draft eligible in that draft is eligible to be selected with whatever pick in the first round. So that's what we're doing here today. And um, yes, let's get right into it. Chiefs would select Eric Fisher with the number one overall pick in the draft. Wow. <laughs> Hasn't exactly been phenomenal for the Chiefs, to say the least. So with this pick in the draft do-over, you guys are going to get the hang of it very quickly. The Kansas City Chiefs select... David Bakhtiari, a tackle out of Colorado, and I know it seems kind of weird. David Bakhtiari is the number one overall pick. He doesn't seem like he'd be a number one overall pick caliber player, but I can assure you he is arguably the best tackle in the NFL right now and protecting Aaron Rodgers at an extremely high level. Not a bad run blocker either. He is the pick. He's that franchise tackle that the Chiefs wanted when they selected Eric Fisher. David Bakhtiari is so out of Eric Fisher's world, it's not even funny. Completely different players. I might as well play in different leagues, because I guess that's pretty much how far out of uh, Eric Fisher's league is a David Bakhtiari, or vice versa. E either way. Oh boy. All right, continuing this sick draft class, and sick draft that was 2013... The Jacksonville Jaguars would select Luke Jokel. This is a different Jaguars organization. They've actually gotten their stuff together to a degree. But, oh boy, was it bad for a while. <laughs> and Luke Jokel totally exemplifies what the Jacksonville Jaguars used to be. They're going to go a different pick. And in this draft do-over, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Lane Johnson. Tackle out of Oklahoma. He's the other fantastic tackle in this draft that isn't Eric Fisher or Luke Jokel. How do they miss so badly? Lane Johnson obviously would go uh, to the Eagles a little bit later in the draft. Jaguars scoop him up with the quickness with his number two overall pick as we move on to the Dolphins who traded up to that number three overall spot. All trade ups and trade downs are included. It's just the complete draft order after the draft. That's the timeline that we're in. That's what we're doing. Dolphins are going to be up next. But with that third pick, they would trade up to select Dion Jordan, a pass rusher out of Oregon. Wow. Did they miss the bar with that one? With this third overall pick, the Dolphins are going to take Ziggy Ansah, pass rusher out of BYU. He's been pretty solid for the Lions. I think you could easily argue that he could have been the top five pick uh, or a top five pick in this draft as he was still. He went with the number five overall pick. He easily could be the third Fits well for the Dolphins. He's a pass rusher that they wanted that clearly was not Deion Jordan. Let's move on to number four, though, as we have the Philadelphia Eagles, who took Lane Johnson with that pick, I believe. Yep, the Eagles would select Lane Johnson. Clearly, Lane Johnson is no longer available as he went a few spots earlier to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And with this pick, they're going to take DeAndre Hopkins, receiver out of Clemson. He could have easily been any one of these top three spots. I wrestled with the idea of throwing him at number one overall. However, I think the tackle made more sense to them at the time. DeAndre Hopkins, absolute beast playmaker. Eagles get him at number four, and they are so lucky and so happy to be able to do so. At number five, the Detroit Lions would select Ezekiel Ansah, pass rusher out of BYU. He is no longer on the board, no longer available to be selected. With this pick in the draft, they're going to take... Le'Veon Bell, how does he fall to number five? The best running back in the NFL available at number five. He's not taken at one, not taken at two, three, or four. Yes, you got to think about it this way. Chiefs are never going to take a halfback. They have Jamal Charles. At number two, the Jags are not going to take a halfback. They don't need one really at all. 
They don't. You, I mean, you could argue that one for the future could have been the pick there, but they have more on their plate. They don't take a running back. At number three, you have the Miami Dolphins. They don't take a running back. Pass rusher was so much more important to them at the time, although you could argue that Le'Veon Bell could have been that number three overall pick. And then at number four, where the Chiefs, excuse me, not, not the Chiefs, where, um, where the Eagles go Lane Johnson, you have Shady McCoy at the time. Granted, you'd end up trading him because Chip Kelly was an absolute imbecile. You can't take a running back. So the Lions get themselves the best running back in the NFL at number five. Le'Veon Bell somehow falls to this team, and the Lions cash in with the quickness. What a player. What a pick for the Lions. Let's move on to number six with the Cleveland Browns. And oh God, it's Barkevious Mingo. At number six, the Cleveland Browns are classically going to brown. It's what they do. They take Barkevious Mingo, an athletic pass rusher out of LSU, and um, might as well call him Bustkevious Mingo. <laughs> Whoops. Didn't work out. <laughs> with this pick in the draft do-over, the Cleveland Browns are going to select Sheldon Richardson, an interior pass rusher out of Mizzou. He was the defensive rookie of the year. I think the Browns would easily take that if they could. Would be a tremendous player for their defensive line if he stays healthy and out of trouble, which would be better here in Cleveland than a big city like New York. Not to say that Cleveland isn't a big city, but New York is the biggest city in the United States. So Sheldon Richardson is the pick here for the Browns. He makes sense. Tremendous, tremendous player when healthy. Browns get themselves a stud. At number seven, though, to continue the trend of absolutely awful picks, the Cardinals select Jonathan Cooper, an offensive lineman out of North Carolina. And there there have been good picks in this draft. Lane Johnson and Ziggy Ansah are the only ones so far in the top seven. Jonathan Cooper clearly does not follow that trend. Instead of Jonathan Cooper, we are changing it up. The Arizona Cardinals select the Honey Badger. Nickel corner slash safety out of LSU. When he's been good, he has been one of the best in the NFL. Now, his coverages are not great in the game right now because he hasn't been great in real life. But when he's playing to his top ability, he is easily a top 10 pick. Fits the Cardinals system really, really well. They get themselves a stud here at number seven if he can play up to where he's played in the past. I know it's a big if. Cardinals are willing to take the gamble and take him in the first round when he would later be a third round pick to them. They got to go with him here. Oh boy. With the eighth pick, the Rams would take Tavon Austin, receiver out of West Virginia. Yeah, he's fast. And that's kind of it. With this pick, instead of Tavon Austin, these then St. Louis Rams would select Keenan Allen, receiver out of Cal. When he's healthy, he's been one of the league's best. I think healthy, easy, easy top 10 receiver in the NFL. One that goes off somewhat consistently with Phillip Rivers. One of the best route runners in the NFL. He's been absolutely incredible. Sure hands as well. It's all about staying healthy. And if he can stay healthy on the Rams, he'll be an incredible receiver for them. They take him over Tavon Austin. I think it's a clear as day pick. At number nine though, God, why teams? Why are you doing this? The Jets go D. Milliner cornerback out of Alabama. This didn't even look like a decent pick at the time. Why would the Jets do this? This draft is so bad. It's bust, 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 after bust, after bust. With this pick to make up for it, the New York Jets select Xavier Rhodes, cornerback out of Florida State. The Rhodes close when he's playing CB because he shuts it down. Jets get themselves that lockdown corner that they wanted and obviously did not find in D. Milner. Let's move on to the number 10 pick, which is the Tennessee Titans. Okay, this is a little bit better, but maybe only slightly, because he's still not a top 10 pick worthy player, and that would be Chance Wormack out of Alabama. I get it, Alabama offensive linemen, they're good at Alabama, they're great. They're not working out in the NFL though, and the next pick is a further proof of that. But instead of Chance Wormack, at number 10, to round out the top 10, the Tennessee Titans will select a different offensive lineman. Now that's going to be Travis Frederick out of Wisconsin, arguably the best center in the NFL, 
and he is so, so young. What a tremendous beard he has as well. A lot of things going for him. He makes way more sense than Chance Wormack, and you could potentially play him at guard and transition him, but why would you? You're going to plug him in at center, and he's going to be one of the best in the NFL for you. Easy pick here for the Titans as we move on to the Chargers at number 11. At number 11, the San Diego Chargers would select DJ Fluker, offensive tackle out of Alabama. Out of Alabama. He hasn't been the guy. He has not been. He's been absolutely terrible. Now he's on the Giants and is terrible. So to make up for it in this redraft, they're going to go with a different player, and that player is going to be K1 Short, defensive tackle out of Purdue. Has been absolutely awesome for the Carolina Panthers so far. Would be a force to be reckoned with on this defensive line that needed as much help as it did at the time. Works so well for the Chargers here. Fits the bill easily. K1 Short, no-brainer pick for me here. At number 12, God, why? Please, like someone kill me now. The Raiders take DJ Hayden, cornerback out of Houston. Why this made sense to anyone, I'm not sure. But DJ Hayden was a pick. He had a lot of health concerns at the time, if I'm not mistaken, as well. So they can't go him. I'm not going to make them take him again. I'm going to save the Raiders here. And instead of DJ Hayden... They're going to select none other than Jamie Collins, a linebacker out of Southern Miss, was tremendous for the Patriots. One of the best athletes in the NFL. You guys should see some Twitter videos of him doing backflips and cartwheels and like double flips and back handsprings and all sorts of crazy shit. Jamie Collins is a hybrid linebacker that fits what the Raiders want to do so, so well. He would work amazingly here, and he'd be a perfect pick for the time. Raiders get themselves a stud, and maybe he stays on the team up until now. They don't have any more linebacker concerns. That's a big deal. Finally, a good pick. The Jets go Sheldon Richardson, a defensive lineman out of Mizzou, and he was a great, great player for them. Won the Rookie of the Year, is no longer there, though, only after a couple of years, gotten a few issues, problems with the law, things of that nature. So they're going to go with a different player here. I also, you guys can see this. Now you know what my screen looks like. That says Twitch bitch. Don't worry about it. Um, uh, okay, uh, the pick is Travis Kelsey, tight end out of Cincinnati. Go Bearcats. Awesome player. One of the best tight ends in the NFL, if not the best. You could definitely argue that he's better than Gronk, I think, at this point. Because he stays healthy. He's a lot of what that Chiefs offense is. I think he and Gronk are pretty much right on the same level. Jets get themselves an absolute stud tight end. At number 14, though, the Carolina Panthers would take Star Latulale, a defensive tackle out of Utah. And Star Latulale has played all right for the Panthers, but has not been amazing, has not been anything special. So with this pick, the Panthers are going to take Brandon Williams, a nose tackle out of Missouri's Southern State. What? Went undrafted, if I'm not mistaken, but he's a beast nose tackle and has been for the Ravens, I think they don't even play him at nose tackle anymore. They play him at 3-4 defensive end, which is kind of a weird fit with Michael Pierce. But they pretty much both play defensive tackle. That's all you need to know. And he's going to be their replacement for what K. Juan Short would have brought to the table and a better option than Star Latulale. So Brennan Williams, very good player with this pick. I like it here for the Panthers. At number 15, the midway point, pretty much. It's not. I guess the next pick is. Um, forgot how many teams were in the NFL, I guess. Kenny Vaccaro would be the pick to the Saints, my boy out of Texas, loved him there, uh, but it's no secret Kenny Vaccaro hasn't played out to that top 15 pick standard, he's coming on as of late, all these players in the draft are still very, very young, but it really doesn't make sense for him to be the pick here at number 15, so instead of Kenny Vaccaro, the Saints select Adam Thielen, a receiver out of Minnesota State, it's cool that he was, you know, at Minnesota State and then went to the Minnesota Vikings, the Vikings, unfortunately, don't have the opportunity to pick up the stud receiver. He's played like one of the league's best this year, leading, or not leading, but he's, he's one of the league leaders in terms of yards and I think touchdowns and catches as well. So he's been insane this year. He'd be a great pairing with Drew Brees, would work so well in this system, and I think he is a clear-cut pick for number 15 overall here. At number 16, the Bills would take their franchise quarterback in EJ Manuel, right? No, <laughs> they wouldn't. What are you doing with with EJ Manuel? I remember that pick too. There was no quarterback worthy of that first round pick. And 
still, one was taken in the first round. The next QB taken, I think, was Geno Smith by the Jets. And it's like, what is going on here? Clearly not the pick. Instead of an abysmal EJ Manuel, the Bills are going to take... Zach Ertz, a tight end out of Stanford. Carson Wentz has, has made him one of the league's best, um, one of his favorite targets, if not his favorite, which I think you could probably say easily. I didn't realize they both had red hair. That's kind of fun. Um, yeah, Zach Ertz works super well here for the Bills. Great tight end option for them. Is another target for whoever is going to be throwing passes to him. But I think he makes a lot more sense in a QB here at number 16, the actual midway, midway point. At number 17, though, God, the Steelers would go Jarvis Jones, a linebacker, really a pass rusher out of Georgia, and oh my God, has he been awful. Basically irrelevant for the Steelers, and instead of Jarvis Jones, they're going to take A.J. Boye, cornerback out of UCF. Crazy kind of that he falls to this point, as he's one of the league's best cornerbacks now, as he had his first actual good season last year, and then has been still on fire this year he's one of the nfl's best cornerbacks it's not debatable in that best cornerback tandem best duo in jacksonville with Jalen ramsey aj boye tremendous tremendous player steelers get an absolute steal here at number 17 i can't believe i haven't fallen this far but it made the most sense when i was doing this so aj boye to the steelers at number 17 at number 18 though the san francisco 49ers would select eric reed has made the pro bowl for the 49ers and that's where I'm going to leave it. With this pick, the San Francisco 49ers select Eric Reed, safety out of LSU. I got to say, this is one of the picks in this draft do-over that I'm the least happy with. Although, I couldn't really find another pick that made a ton of sense here for the Niners. I feel like with Eric Reed being a Pro Bowl safety in his rookie year, and just not being awful the following years, just not being necessarily as good, he's kind of in a weird spot. And I think the Niners would take him again and get that Pro Bowl year if they could do it over and hopefully, you know, go a different way after that and keep building him up instead of having him regress. Get some more talent around him. But yeah, I think Eric Reed is the pick here. That guaranteed Pro Bowl is a tough thing to give away. So Eric Reed is the selection at number 18, I believe. Yep, 18. At number 19, the New York Giants would select Justin Pugh, an offensive tackle, now an offensive guard out of Syracuse. He was supposed to be their franchise tackle, and he has not been. Moved him inside to guard, where he's been a very, very good guard, I have to say. So with this pick, the New York Giants are going to select Darius Slay, cornerback out of Mississippi State. The New York Giants are my favorite team. So maybe the fact that Darius Slay fell here, happened to go to the Giants, and I love Darius Slay, you could maybe draw coincidences from that, but we're just going to call it one big coincidence. I think it makes a lot of sense. Giants, cornerback needy at that time. Darius Slay is one of the league's best cornerbacks. Why not take him here? I, don't, I didn't see him falling to any of those other teams in the draft. I think he makes a lot of sense here for the Giants at number 19, though. At number 20, the Chicago Bears would select Kyle Long, an offensive lineman, um, and Kyle Long has been solid. He has been. Uh, the former Oregon guard has made a Pro Bowl, which apparently is extremely valuable to me. So with this pick in the draft do-over, the Chicago Bears select Kyle Long, right guard out of Oregon. It makes the most sense. He's been a solid guard for them. He's a, the heart and soul of that Bears team, and uh, they're not going to take a different player. Kyle Long is easily the guy here. With the 21st pick, the Cincinnati Bengals would select Tyler Eifert, a tight end out of Notre Dame. He is another Pro Bowl player. And with this pick, the Cincinnati Bengals will select Tyler Eifert, tight end out of Notre Dame. Makes a lot of sense. Another great target for Andy Dalton to throw to. The 6'6 receiver has some speed. I know he's not, a, he's not a receiver. He's a tight end, but he is a receiver. So he's just not a wide receiver. Makes a lot of sense here for the Bengals, and I'm trying to do picks that make sense. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We're not fixing shit unless you amp up my salary. Tyler Eifert's the pick here. At number 22, the Atlanta Falcons would go Desmond Trufant, a corner out of Washington who's been injured, has played well in the NFL so far. But with this pick in the draft do over, the Atlanta Falcons select 
Desmond Trufant, cornerback out of Washington. I like this pick here. Thought about maybe plugging in a Logan Ryan, but he doesn't make as much sense as Desmond Trufant does. So Desmond Trufant is going to stay the pick here at number 22. So we have three picks in a row that have not changed. Let's move on to the Vikings. And of course, we're including all of their trade-ups. They have three picks now in the rest of this thing. Let's move on to their pick at number 23. And with the Vikings' first pick in this draft, first of many, first of three, the Vikings would select Sharif Floyd, a defensive tackle out of Florida. And with this pick in the draft do-over, the Vikings are going to select Sharif Floyd, a defensive tackle out of Florida, as our four picks in a row have stayed the exact same. And it, why change him? Sharif Floyd's been one of the best defensive tackles in the NFL. When healthy and when playing, he has not played in a little while now. Been out for, I think, all of this season for certain. But when he's healthy, he's a great player. Vikings, no reason to change this pick at all. You did well here. All right, back to what we're used to. But Jordan Warner goes to the Colts here at number 24. Horrific pick. One of the worst imaginable. Absolutely terrible. Never did anything for the Colts. Nothing. I'm not sure if he ever picked up a sack. I'm actually going to confirm that right now. Okay, okay. I know he's retired now, but he played three seasons. And to be fair to him, had two and a half sacks his rookie year, and then four in 2014. So, you know, good on him. Not a number three, or not a, not a first round overall pick for someone that's only going to play three years in the NFL. So, yeah, Colts are mixing this one up for sure. And that pick is going to be Larry Warford, a guard out of Kentucky. He was awesome for the Lions when he was uh, in his rookie season, and now has been pretty solid again for the Saints. Got to beef up those trenches and protect Andrew Luck. Larry Warford is the pick here for the Colts at number 24. At number 25, though, the Vikings would select Xavier Rhodes, cornerback out of Florida State. He is no longer available. The Vikings still are going to trade up, though, and they're going to trade up to take. Tony Jefferson, a safety out of Oklahoma. Good safety tandem to go along with Harrison Smith as they would be a very, very good duo. They'd be a great duo. So... Tony Jefferson, I like the pick here. Very, very different type of player than Harrison Smith is. Although, of course, Harrison Smith can play in the box. You just, why would you when he's so good at covering players? Tony Jefferson, not so much. Keep him in the box. Let him make plays. Good pick here for the Vikings at number 25. Let's move on to number 26, where we have the Green Bay Packers. And at number 26, the Green Bay Packers would select Detone Jones, a defensive lineman out of of UCLA. I don't love to tone Jones. He hasn't exactly worked out the way that the Packers probably would have wanted him to. So we're going to change up this pick and give them Eddie Lacy, halfback out of Alabama. Bear with me for a minute. Should I say Packer with me? <laughs> Eddie Lacy's a, a Pro Bowl running back, all right? And I know Pro Bowls don't matter as much. That's not what we're talking about here. But he was so, so solid for the Packers. Everyone thought he was going to be the next big thing. He had good years for the Packers. You're not going to throw those away, even though he's not on the team anymore, obviously. You're still going to take him here in the first round, um, even though he was taken in the second uh, in the actual draft. This was another tough pick. It's hard because Eddie Lacy is a really, really weird player. I think he's worthy of a first-round pick to do how good he's been in his career. Although I don't think he's a first-round caliber player. It's an odd pick, but Packers are going to go him. Uh, at number 26. It is what it is. At number 27, though, the Texans would go DeAndre Hopkins. I can't believe he fell all the way this far because he was better in the draft, and they decided to not take him, which was, uh, or other teams decided not to take him. DeAndre Hopkins fell. He was obviously a top five pick for us in this redraft. You guys watched the video, but instead of DeAndre Hopkins, the Texans are going to take another kind of weird pick. It's going to be Kenny Stills out of Oklahoma. One that's actually really come into his own with the Dolphins. Never really did much with the Saints, but has been solid with the Dolphins for sure. I think he works as a receiver here. If he develops into this exact player that he is right now um, for the Texans, I'm sure that they would take him here late in the first round and get themselves a quality player. But let's move on to the Denver Broncos at pick number 28. They would end up selecting Sylvester Williams, a defensive tackle out of North Carolina, and Sil Williams was another kind of sketchy player that didn't end up being anyone. So instead of Sil Williams, the Denver Broncos select. C.J. Anderson, halfback out of Cal, was an undrafted player, right? 
and now the Broncos have to take him with a first round selection. The reason I did this is he works with the Broncos really, really well. He's one of the best players available currently, so I think it makes a lot of sense that the Broncos would take him. Obviously, I know he was undrafted, but based on the way that things played out, he'd be a first round pick to the Broncos here, I believe. It makes sense. That's what we're going for. Moving on to number 29, we have the Minnesota Vikings for their last pick in the first round where they would take Cordero Patterson. Clearly, as I previously mentioned, the Vikings went Cordero Patterson here with this pick. And uh, with this pick in the 2013 NFL draft do over, if I was saying 2014 for a while, I apologize. I may have been. I'm not even sure. But they're going to select Cordero Patterson, receiver out of Tennessee. Another one. Bear with me. It's kind of hard when you have players at this range in the draft who aren't exactly studs anymore. And it's kind of players that it's like, eh, are they? Are, are they not? I think Cordero Patterson is. He was good for the Vikings. Really, really good. Playmaking receiver slash running back occasionally. He would take a lot of handoffs for the Vikings. I think he fits well. I think the Vikings would do it again if they had the option to. Not a bad player, just not an amazing player. Let's move on to the Rams at pick number 30. And the 30th overall pick would be Alec Ogletree, who had some good years in the NFL, just hasn't necessarily been as consistent as he's needed to be, as he's been pretty horrific in these past couple of seasons. It's unfortunate. Um, as he's a player I liked in Georgia, but I mean, he's not the pick here, but maybe Kiko Alonso is, I don't know. He was a defensive rookie of the year that was traded to the Dolphins and never really got back to where he was after his rookie season after injury, which another unfortunate case, maybe with the Rams, he has another defensive rookie of the year caliber season and then comes out and, uh, does it consistently for the Rams. I'm not sure. I think at inside linebacker, he's a better option than Alec Ogletree is. Although they played a 4-3 at the time, so I guess he'd probably be on the outside. I'm not sure. At number 31, though, the Dallas Cowboys would select Travis Frederick, a center out of Wisconsin. Travis Frederick clearly is no longer available as he was a top pick in this draft. I think top 15 is where we ended up having him. So instead of Travis Frederick, the Dallas Cowboys select Micah Hyde, safety out of Iowa, a guy for the Packers that, like, is he a safety? Is he a cornerback? Is he both? The Packers got to stop doing that. It's really annoying. Like, I hate watching that, where they're like, oh, you're safety. We're going to put you at cornerback and, and vice versa. Take players at their position where they play the best and keep them there. It's not hard. It's like, oh, I wonder why the Packers' secondary isn't too good, because they don't know what they're doing. They can't manage and t They can't manage the team. They can't do it. That's part of why if they didn't have Aaron Rodgers, they'd be the worst team in the NFL every single year. I'm telling you, they would be. Micah Hyde is a good option. Has played tremendously with the Bills after being horrifically mismanaged by the Packers, even though he was an underrated player in the league. Cowboys get themselves a versatile player. Play free, get play strong. Cornerback, if you want him to, I'm not sure. But he works for the Cowboys. They get themselves a very much needed safety and help in their secondary. And with the last pick... The Ravens took Matt Elam. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Matt Elam is a fucking dumpster fire of a player. Selling drugs and all types of shit and not playing well at all. Absolutely terrible player. Instead of Matt Elam, the Baltimore Ravens select. Kenny Vaccaro, safety out of Texas. Hook him horns. One of my favorite players. I think he's still worthy of a first-round pick. I think he is. He hasn't developed into a star safety but that's kind of because of his abilities and what you want him to do. He's exactly what Tony Jefferson is to the Ravens right now. So I think he fits the system well. I think he'd play well. You can play him at nickel cornerback. He has the ability to do that. Um, although, play him at strong safety. Let him make plays. Let him do what he did at Texas. He'd be an incredible player for you. That's going to do it, guys, though. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. These are a lot of fun to do, a lot of fun to make. And, uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.